There you go. There you go. All right. Thank you for moving me uh, up front. I do have uh, uh, quite a few engineers back in the uh, project office who are trying to figure some things out to try to stay on track and see what else we can accelerate. I don't like to leave them unattended, so <laughs> I want to make sure that things keep on moving over there. Um, all right, so quick uh, status update. Uh, this is the current view of where we stand today uh, and highlighting what has changed from last time reported to now. Uh, we have all of these sites have changed. So we have seven sites that have changed status. Um, a little bit more specifically, uh, these five sites have changed to active build. Uh, what that means is that we had there before uh, sites that we had ordered the towers uh, because the regulatory had recently finished and uh, we were waiting for resources to come in to start building those sites. Well, the resources are there and we started that process now, um, which is actually pretty good. That means, again, we're not <laughs> waiting for the tower to show up. We're actually starting to build a site while the tower is being built, manufactured. That way, again, when the tower gets uh, rolled in, uh, everything is ready for it, and then we can uh, build that tower as quickly as we can. Um, one of the things to notice here is uh, we have this particular site over here. Um, what's changed over here is that uh, it was in regulatory status, but it's not being approved for uh, zone uh, rezoning that particular area, which means that if we move it more than <coughs> Uh, 20 feet, we have to restart the regulatory process. Uh, we were looking at somewhere else to put it in that county, but we figured since we got to restart the regulatory process again, um, I'm hitting the eject button and we're going to move out of that county. Instead, we have a site, uh, there's a DOT site over here in this, in this county that we're going to be able to use and make it work for us. So we had a design adjustment, and that means that we're moving into active build for that particular site. We also have these two sites up here, which have changed to tower ordered. That means that these were on regulatory status before, <clears throat> and we can order anything or do anything until that regulatory completed uh, for the same reason as always, right? Uh, regulatory effect can cancel the site, which has a domino effect everywhere else. We didn't want to touch that, but now that that's completed, now we're ordering towers, and perhaps next time around uh, when we present, that, will, that should turn into an active build. Overall, there's only two sites that remain in regulatory. Um, one is in Warren County, and the other one, Hardin. I can't really see that, but um, so. But the good thing here is that if you look at the target dates for these, uh, these should be done in a very near future, particular Hardin. We do have risks associated with Hardin in the regulatory process. We've identified those. Um, if for whatever reason, the regulatory rejects that particular site. We've identified a lease site that we can use to stay on track. And that would be the sixth lease site in the statewide system, which is what we originally proposed when we did the original proposal of the system. Not bad for where we were at the end of last year. I think it led at the end we were at five that were regulatory, so we're down to two right now, which is definitely pretty Nice big change. All right, uh, when it comes to what are the sites that are still sticking out, which we think will be the last sites to be done, uh, those still remain to be the IP uh, TV sites. Uh, we have been moving forward with those. Uh, we believe we have a good solution in place and we're just do all the agreements to get there. And then the Warren County site, which it's basically just in regulatory because that was one of the last ones that we were able to get in the queue. But it's moving quickly, and again, by uh, the middle of next month, we expect that to come in, which means that we should be able to get that site completely built in the second quarter next year. The IPTV sites are complicated um, because uh, these are toss structures with heavy loads on them, and anything that we do on the site, we have to coordinate uh, because it's going to affect the TV broadcasting for that particular area. So there's safety concerns. Um, there's a, a lot more detail uh, that has to be given to these particular sites. We have crews that are going on to the sites actually uh, next week 
where they literally climb the towers and depending where they are in the tower, we got to turn down the power on the, on the television transmitters. They're going to count bolts and measure the bolts and make sure that it's, it's more than just a paper study. We want to make absolutely sure that the tower is good. And we can't even do that until we had some of the paperwork in order and uh, the coordination in place so that we can actually go ahead and power down some of those sites. And hopefully whether we'll cooperate. <laughs> so in summary, uh, we're still building like crazy. Um, the civil uh, site completion is still moving forward. Um, this quarter we have a whole bunch of more sites that we're going to walk through. So that's, that's starting to wind down because now we're going into the optimization piece of this. The microwave dish installations is still continuing. So we have a lot of sites that can go into site shrinking. Uh, so the next phase of this is interconnecting all the sites together. So I expect by next time I should be able to show you a map and so you can see what all the inner, all the uh, sites that are interconnected together. Uh, we have a, quite, a, quite a slew of them and that's part of one of the reasons we have engineers in the office who are been planning on how to do that and the domino effect. Some, in some cases we have one site that prevents the entire eastern side of the state from being lit up. So we're working on all that process right now to try to, to uh, make some modifications to design to keep things moving quicker. Again, only two sites remain in regulatory and we expect those. We don't see any problems with Warren County. Uh, with, uh, with the other one, we, we don't know. <laughs> We, we have, we, we think there's probably about a 75% chance of success, but it's really out of our hands right now. It has to do with some tribal issues, some tribal findings that we need to coordinate with the local tribes and get feedback from them. But the response will, will work out great. If they, uh, if they present more objections, then we'll have to abandon that site and they just jump to the lease site. Again, we have the five lease sites on hold. Again, we have all the stuff ready, but um, I don't want to hit those until everything else is locked. And like the Harden is a, a, an example of that. So if we had to give up, if we went, because our deal is we need to stay at six or less lease sites. So if we don't run into a situation, then we want to be able to give up one of the lease sites and how do we address all that stuff? So we don't want to do that until all the other sites are locked. But the good thing is that uh, we have all the studies in place. Uh, we've been working with them. We know how everything is going to go into the site. We just can't hit go until we feel confident that some of the other ones are going to be locked in, which we're pretty, pretty close to the end now. Again, the IPTV sites right now are the critical path. Um, <clears throat> right now, it's looking that just one of the three IPTV sites will require tower uh, enhancements which is good news, uh, but we are doing the physical visual inspection to make absolutely sure that that's still the case. Because not only are we modifying the towers uh, for uh, taking the load that we're putting on due to ISIX, right? Some of these towers have uh, two uh, microwave dishes. Some of them have four or six microwave dishes. So it gets really heavy. Um, but we also looking, uh, part of the complication with IPTV is that they're going through a rebanding process, which means that their television transmitter antennas have to change. And if they get pushed to the lower band of the spectrum, that means that their antennas get bigger and heavier. So we've had to do a lot of assessments to see uh, where we stand today if we, if we add our load and what happens in the future if they have to change their antenna to something that's bigger and heavier. So if we have to modify, we wanna be able to modify for the bigger and heavier so that IPTV still has their tower assets to modify their antenna structures. So it's, it's complicated. <laughs> but that's why it's been uh, kind of a slow, and I think those will most likely be the last three sites to get built. I think we will probably even do the Warren County site before we were done with the IPTV sites. We helped on the outreach for uh, Region 3, where that demo was done, and that was, that's always good. So far, uh, we, we restarted that again. Uh, we did one in December here. This one, um, uh, we did this one recently, and then we have others that are scheduled. Uh, I think so far, uh, the demand and the interest 
and the questions, I mean, it's just a lot more engaging than things were initially when we started this process. And I think a lot of that is because, again, this is, people are realizing how real this is. And when I show you some of the stuff I have for the next meeting, you'll be able to appreciate how close we are to, to getting this done. Uh, we're, we're so far into this that we're actually starting to look at some of the coverage testing. Uh, so we've been working with engineering to grid out the state and uh, we're, we have some additional options and whatnot. We got to work with the state PM to figure out, uh, but we're looking at setting up um, between 10 and 12 teams to do coverage testing throughout the state, which means uh, we're probably going to be uh, looking at coordinating with uh, local law enforcement as well. Uh, just because of the fact that you're going to have strange people driving around, you don't want to do that in unmarked vehicles. So we got to be able to be escorted with law enforcement, which usually means in a law enforcement vehicle that's marked. And if it's somebody local, that's even better. Um, that's, uh, we're looking at, and just to give you an idea of the order of magnitude here, we're looking at gridding out the state at about 100,000 test tiles or test points throughout the state. Uh, I'll show you some, uh, some information on that next time around. Right now we're in the beginning of this and we're looking at, you know, what's the timeline and how much resources we need. I think I'll have a, we'll have a better uh, picture, something that's more agreeable to everyone uh, next time around. That's all I had. All right. Any questions? Melvin, this is Tom. I have a question. Yes. Would you explain, uh, we have a lot of, uh, a great deal of requests to uh, light up particular sites and site truckings because they're anxious to test it, to use it. Could you uh, explain to the board the risks of that? And there are, there are pros to it, but the risks involved and the complexities uh, when we do that and then allow the testing of it. Yes. So um, when we light up the sites, which is what we're doing right now, we start lighting up the sites. The sites aren't site trunking, which means that, uh, let me see if I go back, let me go a couple of maps. So in this example, in this map, uh, you can see all of the lines, you know, all of these lines here are the microwave paths that connect everything together, right? So when we light up a site and site trunking, that means that that site cannot make it to the core yet. And it may not be necessarily the path to its adjacent site, but it may be that the other, the other site isn't ready. So for example, if I had uh, you know, this site over here, uh, and I could light up, actually I can light up all of these sites over here, but none of them can communicate to the core uh, because this path isn't done or this is, hasn't finished um, regulatory and this is a lease site, this is IPTV, so we can't go this way. So these sites are isolated. So what it means is that while you can have people who are connected to a particular site talk to each other, you cannot have users that talk between the sites uh, because their sites are not interconnected together. So, um, you know, there's some requests to, to try it out, which, which is fine. Um, um, you know, we can work to do some of that, but this is strictly for getting familiar with trunking and uh, getting familiar with the coverage footprint for that particular site. The thing to keep in mind is that uh, you can have, for example, um, let's see. so if I look as an example, so here's an example where we have a county that doesn't even have a site in it, right? It doesn't have a site in it, but it, there's still coverage because this site, that site, this site, this site, and this site surround the county to also provide coverage for that county. So the way the system works is that all of these sites will work together in conjunction, connected to the core, so that no matter if you're connected to this site, this site, or that site, the, you can still talk to each other because everything is interconnected together. But when you have an island, and this site, for example, since we've ordered tower, but this site isn't running yet, we set up this site for site trunking. Well, you're going to get the coverage footprint for that site. And if you're down here trying to test, you can get, you're going to get the impression that, oh, my God, this system doesn't really give us the coverage. Well, that's because only that site is lit up, right? 
So it's it's really a perspective, you know, the, the user's perspective, whoever tries playing around with this, needs to understand where the sites are uh, because the sites are not interlinked together yet. We have some of them that are, but not all of them. And that's the reason why uh, site trunking is, is a fail soft mode. The whole idea is if all <coughs> else goes bad, users that are connected to that site can still talk to each other, which is what we always want. We always want the radio user to be able to reach somebody. Uh, but it's, it's strictly a fail mode operation uh, which uh, for, if you're doing some kind of an assessment, it's not the right way to do an assessment. Any questions? One more, this might be simple, might be a little bit complicated. So are you still on schedule though, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So the regulatory sites as well as the uh, IPTV sites and stuff won't delay what our target date was. No, what, what might, ha again, depends if we run into a really big problem. I think, I think the most complicated one is this one way up here. This is the biggest, heaviest one that uh, requires modification. So what we're going to do is, again, depending, like right now, most of the sites on this side, Region 6, for example, are, <laughs> are done. Um, and so we're trying to get, uh, I think there's uh, Jasper Scales is this one over here. Uh, once we get this guy connected, that means all these sites can talk to the core, which is over here. That means that pretty much the entire eastern side of the state is going to be lit up, right? Uh, so if we run into a situation where we have a site, which right now we don't see that, but if we have a site that for whatever reason we can't get up and running that blocks uh, you know, several sites from getting there, those are the things that we have to deal with. Sure. So the way we look at it, it the reason why we have uh, <clears throat> you know, looking at 12 teams is that we might just target uh, these uh, emergency management regions. And for example, if we have an issue over here, well, well, let's not start this yet. We can start coverage testing in this area and then move west. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from Nolan? All right. Thank you. Okay.